This is China's tropical rainforest. I've come here to explore some of the plants and wildlife, but particularly China's largest land animal. China is vast. It's got the greatest mountain range, the Himalayas, the highest plateau, more caves than any other country, and three of the longest rivers to be found on Earth. In this series, I'm going to search out some of China's furthest corners. This is a little bit dicey going in here. Discovering the unexpected and thrilling life that's to be found here. I think this is your snow leopard. Oh, look at that look one. Look at that yes. one. On the trail of the unique animals, landscapes, and people of wild China. Hey! This is Sichuan Banna Tropical Botanical Garden. It's the largest of its kind in China and of great importance. Now, as you can see, I'm surrounded by rainforest and I love rainforest, but particularly because this is a world-class garden. There are 13,000 species growing here, some of them pretty weird and mysterious. I'm in Yunnan province, exploring a region that's been called China's Amazon. It's home to some of their smallest insects and largest animals, and I'm on the trail of them both, starting here in one of the world's most famous botanical gardens, a hotspot for plants and insects. One of the frustrating things about a rainforest is that all the trees look the same, but that's the value of a botanical garden like this. Things are labelled. And here we've got Antiaris toxicaria. Like many trees, it protects itself because there's a war being raged in here between the trees, the insects, everything. This is a, is a competitive environment, but it protects itself in its bark. And the local hunters would score it and collect a latex-like sap that comes out. And with that, they dip in their arrows because when that mixes with blood, it's lethal. It is so poisonous it's said that a single drop can kill a goat, and six drops will kill a horse. This is a beautiful place, but it can be deadly, and so are some of the creatures in it. This is the part of the garden that most people never see. You know, two thirds of this garden are set aside for research. I've been invited to explore its secrets with conservationist Dr. Ning Chao. Hello, Ningqiao. Hi. Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You're going to show me some of the wildlife in the garden. Okay, I'll take you to the garden. Yes. Look at this. This is China's biggest spider. We call this the golden spider. Look at the stripes on its body. China's golden orb web spider is famous for its impressive webs. It's a pretty wide spread that those legs give. It must be about 12 or 14 centimetres. Yeah, it's beautiful. Their webs are extra strong and can be up to one and a half metres wide, making them formidable traps for the unwary. Now, I've seen these sorts of spiders in rainforests before. Normally, unfortunately, you don't see them until you walk into them. And you go, oh, you have a horror. But of course, the horror that I experience is nothing compared to the dangers that the male of this species experiences. The special point about this spider is that the male is really tiny compared to the female. The male is just three millimeters big. And when it is mating season, they have to pick the right moment. But what if they don't get it right? It will be eaten. It's a pretty tough life for a male, male golden spider. Amazing. It's thought that there are over 3,500 species of spider in China. Many are new discoveries, but a few are familiar garden guests. Rain. Rain, look. look. 
This one looks like a spider, but it's not a spider. Its eyes are very tiny, so we call it the blind spider. It's a very good name. <laughs> we would call these harvestmen, but there are so many here moving. Why are there so many? Due to their poor eyesight, they must work together when hunting. This increases their chances of catching their prey. It's amazing. It looks as though the whole ground is moving here. I can even, I can even hear them. What are they hunting for? They are carnivores, so they mainly eat things like insects and other bugs. Meat is their main food. They don't eat plants. For the other insects that live here, this is a nightmare. An army of harvestmen making their way through the undergrowth. It's not just the forest floor that's alive with life. Over 260 different species of bird flourish in the tree canopy, including the crimson sunbird. Incredibly intense scarlet breast and iridescent green head is just beautiful. Yes, we call this the sunbird. It is like the hummingbird in the West. It loves nectar. It's just beautiful. Unlike hummingbirds that hover whilst they drink, crimson sunbirds prefer to perch. Sunbirds love this type of long, tube-shaped flower. They insert their beak into it to suck up the nectar. Yep. In fact, you see that one there is just putting its bill in at the top of the flower. It's taking the shortcut through the side. It's quite skillful. You know, until I came here, I didn't realize that China had a tropical area like this. But in the next part of my journey, I'm going to put the small animals behind me and look for something much bigger and, frankly, more dangerous. China's wild Asian elephants used to roam across all of China, but now they can only be found in this corner of Yunnan province. It's thought that there are only 300 of them left in the wild. Yeah. Before I track them down, I want to find out more about how they're being protected by a new conservation scheme. Hello, Fayong. Ni hao. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Here, local farmers like Dao Fayong live alongside the wild elephant herds. Unfortunately, his fields of bananas and plantain are irresistible to his elephant neighbors. This is the heart of the conservation area. Elephants come here regularly because we grow many crops that the elephants like. In order to protect the elephants and support the farmers, the government compensates Dao Feong for any damage the elephants do to his fields. And you're also a, a ranger within the conservation area. I'm trained in elephant encounters and I try to prevent accidents. Three years ago, Dao Feong was on patrol when he unexpectedly came face to face with three adult elephants and a baby. The adults charged at him. We ran for 50 meters until we thought we were safe, but then another one appeared and charged at us, so we had to run again. Such encounters are dangerous for animals and humans alike. To prevent them, an innovative new system has been introduced. So how does your protection system work? We have infrared cameras on the paths the elephants use. We tell each other on the phone where the elephants are. Every day, the elephants follow a regular trail through the jungle to reach the river that flows alongside the farmer's fields. It's a dangerous place for farmers and elephants to run into one another. 
the main route runs through the bottom of the valley where the water is. Elephants need at least 100 litres a day. Well, the ground here is really telling a story. This is the elephant highway. On the left, you can see there's tea planted, and on the right is forest. So this is where wildlife meets humanity. And already on this pathway, I can see elephant footprints. This is a really clear one here, look. And you can see, as the elephant's going downhill here, he's put his foot down in soft ground, and the foot has just slid a little bit as he gets purchase. And you can see he's going downhill because of the nails that are showing in the front edge. And this is a rear foot. And the rear foot's longer and narrower than the front foot. I don't know the soil here, but I would say that these are pretty fresh. That's exciting. This is a, a very big animal and it's very close by. I can clearly see why there's a need for an early warning system. right on the elephant trail here and it's a little dangerous. You have to keep your wits about you because you see how thick it is. An elephant could literally be just a few meters in the thickets and if you don't spot it, you could be in serious trouble. Elephants, despite their size, have this ability to vanish in woodland. We really must stay alert now and the trail is going deep into the rainforest. I'm not the only one on the lookout. Further up the trail, I meet elephant ranger Wang Bin. Wang Bing. Hello. Ni hao. Very nice to meet you. So this is your uh, early warning system trigger, a trail camera. This is the front line of the whole elephant warning system. It is an infrared camera trap, and any passing animals will trigger it. Once it is triggered, a picture will be sent to my phone. And with that, I can see if it's an elephant and I can sound the alarm. That's amazing. So by the use of these cameras, you know when the elephant was there, how many there were there, and which direction they were heading. Yes, it's instant. And I can trigger an alarm immediately from my phone to sound a warning siren. It's so lovely to see modern technology being used in such a beneficial way. But the question I have to ask you is, did I trigger the camera? Oh, there I am. Caught on camera. I can hear the sirens sounding. <laughs> As dusk falls, the failing light makes it even more difficult to see into the shadows. You know, I've got complete faith in your system but I am a little old school and I just saw some very fresh elephant tracks and big ones too. So I think perhaps it's time to head back to the village. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but tomorrow I'm looking forward to a very special elephant encounter. I'm exploring the tropical rainforest in Yunnan province in southwest China in search of the wild Asian elephant. I'm really excited because I've been invited to the Asian Elephant Breeding and Rescue Center. Now that's been in operation since 2008 and already it's making a difference to the number of elephants in the wild. There are fewer than 300 wild Asian elephants in China Although tiny, that's twice as many as there were 20 years ago. In part, that's down to village conservation schemes, but it's also down to the work being done here to nurture and rewild the elephant population. Well, here we are. I can already smell elephants. How exciting. This facility isn't open to the public, but I've been invited in to meet one of China's leading elephant conservationists, Dr. Bao Mingwei. Mingwei, ni hao. Oh, yeah, hello. Nice to meet you. This elephant is called Cockroach. We are about to give him a checkup. 
。OK， 我们要带出去检查一下。小强 ，OK， 嗯，这小强，今年四岁。Cockroach is four years old. He's an orphan. He was abandoned by the herd when he was only eight months old and was living alone. He was very miserable. So we brought him to the rescue center and fed him. Now he's grown and put on weight and he's in good spirits. Come on then, Cockroach. Let's go and get you checked up, shall we? Cockroach is just one of 20 elephants rescued by the centre since it opened 12 years ago. Some had been orphaned or abandoned by the herd, others are injured. The centre nurses them back to health, and when they're ready, they release them back into the wild. OK, very good, very good. OK. Mm. You're taking a really careful look at the feet. Good. Elephants' front toes rest on the ground, but their heels sit on thick cushioned pads. It means that these enormous animals actually walk on their tiptoe. It's very easy for an elephant to pick up a sharp stone or a big thorn or a sharp twig, and that can cause a problem, make it lame. And they do a lot of walking in the wild. They absolutely depend on their feet, so they've got to be in good order. His left leg is good too. Okay, good. Yeah. I think he's passed his foot examination. Okay, we're going to now I'm going to check his lungs to see if they are healthy. Fantastic attention to detail, isn't it? The care that's required to take care of these animals. An elephant's trunk is effectively a long nose with numerous functions for smelling, breathing, grabbing things like food, drinking and trumpeting. Good. We check for lung infections. This sample will go to the lab to be analysed. And the trunk, well, that's, that's the most important thing, really, for an elephant. This is the way they explore the world. Asian elephants have one lip at the tip of their trunks, which they use a bit like a finger. There, show them your lip. <laughs> oh, beautiful. In a few years' time, this will definitely be the largest cockroach in the world. <laughs> it's a great name. Every day, the orphaned elephants are walked into the surrounding jungle to familiarise them with the wilderness. Well, here we go. This is a nursery school class, getting ready to go out into the forest and become familiar with it. All necessary steps towards being released back into the wild. <laughs> They're fabulous. Two other youngsters arrive, led by an older female elephant, their new mother and teacher. When she sees Cockroach, there's a fond greeting between them. <laughs> it's chaos in the nursery class today. One of the youngsters has gone running off in search of a banana. <laughs> Come on, this way, this way. Come on. <laughs> Come on, greedy guts. <laughs> Elephants are very sociable animals. In the wild, they live in family groups. For Cockroach and his new family, this is a dress rehearsal for their future life. You see how easily they can move up a steep slope. It's nothing to them. They take one step and we have to take three to keep up. It's lovely to see them out in the forest. Lots of things to sniff, lots of things to eat, to play with. Yeah, even my cameraman, I'm gonna push him out of the way. Oh. <laughs> I think that elephant likes to be the centre of attention. Yeah, a good scratch. These are some of the skills for surviving in the wild that they are discovering. When they have an itch, they learn how to use branches to rub their skin. When they are hungry, they learn which plants they can eat and which vines contain water. 
Okay, okay. I don't want this training will helpfully prepare them for release back into the wild. Nice. This is the most wonderful thing. So tell me, what's the future for these elephants? I love elephants so much. It comes from the deepest side of my heart. The ultimate goal of our reintroduction training is to let the elephants go back to the wild and return to nature. But it is not an easy task. We must persist. We must reinforce their survival skills and then set them free. It's been a real privilege to work with you today. I share your vision. Perhaps in 50 years' time, China will be able to celebrate a very well re established wild elephant population. Thank you. You know, this is one of the most wonderful things to see. Elephants around the world are so beleaguered by negative impacts with humanity, and here they're being restored to the wild. It's the most beautiful thing. Next time, I'm heading into China's mysterious cloud forest. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. On the trail of one of the country's wild superstars.